It is Thursday, April 4th. Thirsty Thursday. <laughs> I am hurting right now. Bro, you can tell as soon as you open up the show. <clears throat> your thirsty shit. day was yesterday. My You're thirsty funny. Wednesday was crazy. Mind of the Menace, though. That went down. Um, what a fucking night that was. So Ainsley came to the house. We recorded a Mind of the Menace. It's on Patreon for anyone that is a general tier or higher. It is definitely worth the money. And my liver is never going to forgive me for that one. It was fucking, it was, it was so much fun. It was awesome. Justine and I had a blast talking with Ainsley, talking about their plans and, and revealing the next step for this platform that will be revealed publicly, probably at the live show. But if you're on Patreon on the general tier, you already found out about it. It's called the Menace Freak Society. I won't go into more details, but it is Justine's baby. And the queen of menace is building a pillar. And I guess Ainsley would be then the princess of menace is building it with her. And it is going to be phenomenal. It's going to be degenerate, sexy, and it's going to be incredible. So really had a blast doing that. I'm trying to get my shit together today because it. I woke up this morning like, whoa, I felt like I was in college again. So here we are. You get a hungover show today, I guess, from me. Chris is fine. He's perfectly sober, had a great night's sleep, um, probably drank some tea, is drinking tea, one yeah. of the two. Yep. But my sister's home, dog, so my, my siblings played Monopoly and boxed it out for a while. Monopoly really <laughs> destroys families. It I does. Believe. It really does. Um, so we had my, my mom. My Who got boardwalk? Um, I actually went to bed before we got there, bro. I was getting too unhinged. <laughs> I didn't play. I didn't play. I was oh, watching. You didn't play. No, no, I was watching. It was my my cousin, my uh, two sisters, my mom, and my brother, and it was just an all out war, and I wanted to know parts of it. <laughs> um, so I watched for a little bit and then went to bed because I just couldn't handle it. Well, hey, we got a lot to talk about today, bro, brother. What? My phone's been blowing up. I know your phone's been blowing up in the dark of the night. Ohio came to their senses and legalized seven on seven. On April 3rd, like sweet, a little late to the party, but here we are. And now people won't stop hitting me up about starting a seven on seven team. And guess what, motherfuckers? We are. We're starting one. I don't know if we can get it done for this seven on seven season because it's so late, but we're going to try. And if not, 2025 menace, Ohio menace, whatever you want to call. I don't know what we're going to call them yet. I mean, we can definitely get the players. It's just about, like, can you register for tournaments still? Register for tournaments, field space, practices. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. Mm -hmm. But I already have the charity. I already have the funds raised. We obviously will take more donations, and we'll set up a way to do that to help fund this team that is going to be the best of the best in Ohio. And let's go fuck up the country. What do you say? Yeah. Yeah. Text Brett Getz right now. Tell South Florida Express we're coming. (laughs) <laughs> and we might not be able to be that good but he, we're gonna be he close. tweeted ohio express and somebody tagged us in it oh i didn't see that i mean honestly they might as well just get with us and put it all together if they want an ohio branch <laughs> hey we got it it's coming and i said it i mean flippantly last week when we talked about it i was like oh if they ever legalize it i'll, I'll start a seven on seven and now of course like yesterday they just randomly legalized it and everyone's tagging us and i'm like oh shit here we go fucking put your put your money where your mouth is motherfucker here we go, mm-hmm. here we go. So, Menace 707 coming soon. It's going to be a blast just because I don't have enough going on in my life. I need to add one more thing. But it's going to be fun. Oh, what, what do I do now? Oh, I start the show? Is that what I... Yeah, you start the show or tell us your plans for the day. My, I don't know. I fucking no idea. I have all my kids. I'm, I need to eat something eventually, and yeah. it's probably not going to be healthy the way I feel. It's going to be pretty unhealthy. I'm definitely not on my Menace uh, transformation right now. My fitness journey today is going to be... A, a day to remind me why I'm on a fitness jersey, 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 journey. <laughs> Bro, you're down bad today. Down bad today. Yeah. I told you I'm down bad today. Yeah. Uh, but it was well worth it. It was so fun. Um, Justine and Ainsley did the show topless, and and it's I think the five hundred dollar tier. We'll put out the video. No, I'm just kidding. That, oh. that that's not real. But but maybe maybe in the future, let me know if you'd pay five hundred bucks a month to watch them topless do a show. Hey, it might be a new show. Who knows? Topless with with the queen and pr- uh, princess. <laughs> Full degeneracy. All right, let's get this thing going. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying right now. Lukey, let them know what time it is, Bubba. And we're back. Let's get to the show. 
Oh, man, what a time. Want to open up with a hockey topic, bro, just because this took place yesterday? This is actually. What? That is a visual representation of our chat before the show starts. It really is. Like, that's that's what it is. That was the army battling in the chat every as, day. As soon as the show starts, no matter what, because we do have our, our Michigan group of fans, our Ohio State group of fans, obviously the two biggest fan bases we have. They just go at it. They will oh. find anything in the world to go at it over. The minute I say it is, mm -hmm. it's like, Fuck you, Michigan broke bitch. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, oh, it is time to go, I guess. It's time to get it started. <laughs> it's time for war. It's time for war. That's <laughs> what it is. So shout out hockey. Me, we were talking all before the show about it. Like it's, it's like, awesome. Could it's you amazing. imagine this in other sports? No, though? they that they let it happen. It's it's truly fascinating. Mm -hmm. Like what a barbaric thing that I'm here for. It's it's phenomenal. And imagine if they allow it in other sports. It like, would just get too ugly in other sports, bro. I mean, they they don't allow it in baseball, but when the bench is clear, like, there ain't shit they can do about it. <laughs> like, what are you going to do, jump in the middle? Bro, but really, baseball players aren't really trying to squabble no, like but, that. No, like, a, baseball, couple, a couple of them are. Yeah, a couple of them, but but baseball players, like, I, I'll never forget Jose Ramirez, two-piece, that second baseman from oh, yeah. whatever team that was. That was crazy. But just dropped his ass. Bro, Batista getting his <laughs> shit blasted, bro. Oh, it was awesome. Odor blasted his shit. That shit was so good, it made the cover of a Drake uh, diss record, bro. That shit was crazy. <laughs> But football's the one. You, mm -hmm. you just can't let those motherfuckers fight. Nah, dude. You yeah. let them fight, they'll shoot people or something. I don't know what. I don't know what'll happen. You just can't do it. Well, you know, just one. You know, it. There's too much disparity, bro. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, there's too much size disparity. And in hockey, like, like, yeah, you can hurt and punish people, but you're also skating while you're trying to fight. Yeah, bro. In football, like, what happens when that defensive end locks eyes with a fucking slot wide receiver? You know what I'm saying. Imagine like Patrick Queen versus Tank Dell. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh my God. God. Tank, yeah, I'm pressing charges for real. Oh, he's get just the minute it starts, the ambulance starts rolling out on the field. Yeah. And also, like, you know, the the football media might be a little bit too soft about it. Remember when Miles Garrett cracked Mason Rudolph? They yeah. were like. He could have killed him. Well, to be fair, he could have. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying it's like, well, it's well, that, football. That's the real problem with football, right, is they have helmets. So if they're on during the fight, there's broken hands everywhere. Mm -hmm. If they come off, oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. And you're not trying to skate while you fight. You got both feet planted. Yeah, so there's can, no doubt. So you can really turn and punch somebody's noggin off. Um, Fox Sports is introducing a new rival to the NIT tournament called the College Basketball Crown, hosted by two arenas in Vegas, 16 teams that failed to make the NCAA tournament, two auto bids for Big Ten, Big 12, and Big East, set to launch spring of 2025. Do you like the NIT getting a competitor? Um, I, I guess. I mean, no one cares. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not going to rival March Madness. I've never watched the NIT, not a single game. Ohio State was in it. I think they did decent. Didn't watch a single game. Um, it's kind of the, I mean, what are we talking about? 68 teams make the March Madness. If you're the 69th team, like, fuck off. Your season should just be over. Yeah. Like, it's like a team that went five and seven in college football. Like, go go get in the weight room and come back next year. Try again. I only like it if Fox sees the writing on the wall and they're able to give big prize money to the winning team. That's the only way I like it. Now, remember, they've introduced that pay-for-play tournament with about eight or nine schools going to play in. It's like, well, the winning team gets this amount of cash they can split amongst them because they know the NCAA now will not go after them. So if there's a prize pool with it and Fox is like, fuck it, like, fuck the NIT. Like, we, we can offer – Three hundred thousand dollars to the winning team, and it goes all to the players. And if we get with the, you know, you know, what I'm saying like that, that would make that really fun and a sense of urgency. Because what do we like about playoff sports? The buzz that goes along with the game because it feels like it means something, and they're playing for something, yeah. right? They're playing for something. And obviously, the schools in this, it's not going to be the guys that have you know five <laughs> NBA guys on the roster because these are the teams that miss the tournament. Yeah. So you're going to get these guys that 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 hundred thousand dollars or whatever means a lot to them, and you're going to get some really good basketball, I think, or at least some really high-intensity basketball, which sometimes the NIT feels like it's missing. I've got a different business model for you, and this one I would definitely watch. After the round of 32, after the first two rounds are done, you take every eight-seed or higher that got upset, Kentucky by Oakland, mm -hmm. put them all in a tournament Whoa! for money, and now you have – ridiculously talented basketball teams, mm -hmm. teams that people had going deep in the tournament. Now they're all playing for, like you said, prize money or whatever it is. And it's not like shitty teams that couldn't even make the tournament. It's call teams it. that just had an off day. Call it the second chance tourney. Yeah. 
something like that. That's that's really cool. Um, I have I have this for you, Zach. The most Final Four appearances in college football, basketball all time, and I find it interesting because a lot of people told us in college football or college, college basketball. basketball excuse oh yeah, me. a lot of people told us that we need to be patient with Chris Holtman because Ohio State never really had a premier basketball team, and they, they they've been to the game. fifth most Final Fours ever. Yeah, how about that? Wild. How about that? So, so North Carolina with twenty one. UCLA with 19, Duke with 17, and Kentucky with 17, Kansas 16, and Ohio State with 11. Yeah, I mean, that first row is your blue bloods. Yeah, that's the blue bloods of college basketball on the on the top row. And Ohio State has the most in the Big Ten, the six, fifth, sixth most in the country. So Chris Holtman sucks. Right. Moral story, Chris Holtman really fucking sucks. And what that showed me is that, okay, Ohio State should hold their basketball program to the same standard as Louisville does. And Louisville fucking loves their basketball. Oh, yeah. They've been to 10 Michigan tournaments. Michigan State, too. Exactly. They love their basketball. So now I think Ohio State had been kind of telling themselves that, you know, maybe we don't deserve to make the tournament. That graphic should show you hold yourself to a higher yeah, standard. What are we talking about? Indiana, UConn. Like, there's some Villanova. The Georgetown. Georgetown. Like, there's some serious basketball teams there that have been to the Final Four less than Ohio State. Right. So don't lower your standards. Raise your coaching. <laughs> exactly. And again, I, you know, on this show, every now and again, just fuck Chris Holman. They, it's like, always fuck Chris Holman. He was awful. Like, he he sucked. It was <laughs> bad. And I cannot believe that that's who Gene Smith was was holding out for all this time. So, what, a, what a time. What a time. Um, Angel Reese has declared for the WNBA draft officially. Good luck. Have fun. I would have stayed another year, probably. Um, I would have tried to get on get in on the big three with Caitlin yeah. Clark. I would have called Ice Cube like, "Yo, I'll take two point five million. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll you want to keep this rivalry going? I'll take half. Yeah, I'll take I'll take two and a half. Just like because that it. literally is twenty five years worth of salary in the WNBA. I just don't know why. Because like right now, college basketball does like women's college basketball is doing so much better than WNBA. Why limit your visibility? And now, like it, it, it always goes one way, Zach. You're the underdog, then you're the villain. And then you're back to the people you, the person people root for. She would have came back next year. She would have been the biggest star in college basketball by a mile. Yeah, people would have rooted for, her, and we we could have got her versus Juju, who are going to be the two premier stars. I would have stayed another year. I think money wise, it's it would have been better for. Her, but well, I mean, what it, I think that and I'm making this up. I, I think I read this. I think that the, the, the average WNBA salary is like ninety seven thousand um, dollars. It might be less than that actually. It's 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 it's, it's wild because. If you're the premier superstar in women's college basketball now, after all the, the attention that has been paid, I mean, we just saw 12.3 million people watched the LSU Iowa game. Like, you can definitely get 100K in NIL. Yeah. So it's 113 is the average salary right yeah, now. You can make more than that in college. Mm -hmm. You definitely can. If you're her. No, I mean, not on average, but she can. Right. She, she can. And, you know, we'll, we'll see. And also, like, I worry about the visibility of the WNBA because when is their season? No idea. Nobody knows. No, but shout out to Angel Reese. Like she's mm -hmm. she already has deals signed with Beats by Dre, Airbnb, Mercedes Benz, whatever fuck ZOA is. Got to deal with them too. Like she's she's gonna make her money. Yeah, she is. Um, Patrick Mahomes Senior is facing up to ten years in prison after that DWI. If uh, you don't have the picture of this guy to put on screen, you failed. Because <laughs> what the fuck is that? Bro, we already he's had Patrick Mahomes. I know he's Jackson Mahomes' dad. For sure, looking at that picture. But he's Pat Mahomes' dad, too. <laughs> oh, good old good old Pat Sr. He's not going to serve that, though. No way, right? Um, who knows? I mean, you, you think Patrick Mahomes can get him out? Yeah. Bro. Out of it? I, I, think, I think. I mean, he'll have good lawyers. That's for sure. I think rich people very rarely serve jail time for Like a, a third a third DUI gets you 10 years in prison? Yeah. like That's wild. Like, how many does the Huggins dude have? Fucking, I don't know. Like. Uh, I mean, a should, Baker's dozen. I mean, the Michigan coach that just got fired. Yeah, he's he has at least like three. He's, he's got three. But felony, I don't know how you, I, I don't know the law. How do you get a felony DUI? Like, I did he hit that. people or something? I don't, I don't think so. I said he got pulled over. <laughs> he must have been really fucked up. Yeah, they said bro doesn't regret it based on his picture. And it, and it might be your third one is a felony. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't I'm not sure. I know it, it elevates like that sometimes. But yeah. Um, oh, there you go. Sorry. Just got a text. Oh. It was a Freak Society text, Justine and Ainsley. I don't oh. know. I, I forgot my phone at home, but my watch still works. See, bro, I'm over here like. 
You thought it was something cool. I thought a coach hit you up like, hey, seven on seven, here's 20 bands. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I was thinking based on the uh, based on the way you stopped. This is some crazy front runner shit if I've ever seen it. Um, the Dallas mayor, Eric Johnson, wants the Kansas City Chiefs to move to Dallas after Arrow uh, after Arrowhead Stadium renovation was denied by the voters. Two teams in Dallas? Like what? <laughs> Bro, that's just some crazy front runner shit, right? Yeah. Like these weak ass Dallas fucking Cowboys, weak ass Dak Prescott, weak ass Trey Lance, the weakest actually Trey Lance. <laughs> Trey Lance weak as shit for real. Don't want him. Fucking I think it's the Dallas mayor like fuck Jerry Jones. He sucks. <laughs> yeah. Everything about him sucks. <laughs> Bring us the 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 Chiefs. <laughs> we want Andy Reid. Yeah, we we want Andrew Reid to come here. <laughs> um I don't think that's how it works. They're not going to move, but it is shitty that like they just won two straight, right? And they're what yeah. three of the last three five? of the last four or five, yeah. And they can't get a stadium renovation. Hey, I, I I mentioned it. My daughter was in St. Louis playing volleyball, and we were in the fucking stadium where the Rams used to play the greatest show on turf. And yeah. what a shithole it was. I mean, cool for a twelve year old volleyball tournament, mm -hmm. not cool for an NFL football team. There's a reason why the Rams left, but and it's like they were really fucking good, by the way. They were, they were. I mean, so. All all the money that these teams bring in, right, for the area. Why wouldn't you want to invest in the upkeep of the stadium? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Oh, geez, here we go. See, the, the, Justine and Ainsley are texting about how I don't have my phone, but I would see it on my watch and I would stop the show. So I will stop the show. Ainsley just texted that she got stopped by the bathing suit police at Lifetime, our gym that we go to. Oh, she and because did? part of the show last night, we were I was talking about body positivity and how basically both of them dress like sluts, but they're not. They're very confident women that are confident in their body. It was a whole conversation about just dressing super sexy and what does that mean for your confidence, blah, blah, blah. And we talked about how I got in trouble of all the, I mean, Ainsley, Justine, I mean, half the women that go to Lifetime, when they go get in the sauna or go in the pool, they wear like string thongs. And it's like, you can see everything. And I was wearing compression shorts down to my kneecaps. Yeah. And I had a lifeguard come over and say I was dressed inappropriately. And I was like, what? I'm, it's no different than like a Speedo, but it's down to my knees. And she told me not to wear that. <laughs> yeah, they said it had to be like what? Uh, like designated swimwear? Yeah, it has to be... Uh, Proper swim attire. It has to be like when you buy it, it has to say this is for swimming, I guess, which is fucking absurd because I can wear gym shorts. No problem. But apparently Ainsley got in trouble by the bathing, the, the bathing suit police today. Huh? What a world. Yeah. There's a little, this little backstory. Um, my mission on this show is to make people realize how overrated Trevor Lawrence is. And if you're going to call <laughs> Justin Fields a bust, also call Trevor a bust. Um, I, I, look, I throw this up here because. Come on, man. I really think he's Brock Osweiler with better PR and better hair. Because what the hell is this? Gardner Minshew, two seasons as a starter for the Raiders. 59 touchdowns, Trevor Lawrence 58. 24 interceptions, Trevor Lawrence 39. 90.2 QBR, Trevor Lawrence 85. 49 games played, 50 games played. Can we start calling Trevor Lawrence a bust if we're going to crucify Justin Fields and say he's a bust? And he's only needs to be a backup. So he's worth a sixth round pick and can be a backup. What the fuck is Trevor Lawrence then? Trevor Lawrence should be third string or going to Canada. Like, let's be real now. I know he's taller. He's lighter complected. But like, why, why are we not talking about Trevor Lawrence as a bust? I'm just saying, bro, that's pretty damning, right? That's pretty alarming. He's got long hair. That's why. He's Brock Osweiler with long hair, bro. No one wants to ever <coughs> say it. But I'll I'll fuck I'll fucking say it. If Justin Fields is worth a sixth round pick, what's T Law worth? Uh, can you trade a free agent? <laughs> a free agent pick? I, I'm just saying, like, does Trevor have some talent? Yes. But when's he gonna translate to something? Because he's not better than Justin Herbert. It, it kind of matters, right? It kind of matters that you actually have success on the field. That's important. I don't know what we're talking about here. Like, is he better than Justin Herbert? No. no. Is he better than CJ Stroud? No. No, he's not. He's not better than Joe. He's not better than who's he better than? I, I mean, it, Tyler Henneke? Shit, me too. Right. Is he better than Baker Mayfield? Baker, no. Baker just had a far better no. year last year. The answer is no. He's not better than Baker. I, I would I'll, ever. Not better than Baker ever. Let alone this past year when Baker actually had a great year. He's not better than Baker Mayfield ever. 
I, I'm just I'm just saying Jameis Winston, when he threw 30 picks, he got banished to the shadow realm. <laughs> saying I, I I watched T Law go four and four like it's like it's Wendy's. And I'm talking about four picks, four TDs, and everybody told me that was a good game. I'm I'm just like, when can we talk about it, brother? We're talking about it now. Okay. Trevor just, Lawrence sucks. There we go. There you go. There we go. Watch, well, he's gonna fucking explode this year. I hope so. This. I, I, I love I love motivating people. I don't hope so. <laughs> I hope if one guy explodes, I hope it's Justin Fields, no Diddy. I hope it's Mel Tucker. Oh, you're talking about oh, you're talking about football. No Diddy, double time. Um, and <laughs> with that, let's get a quick word from our partner. All right, we'll be right back after this. Menace Army, I've told you a hundred times already. The best sheets I've ever owned, ever used. They're sexy, they're comfortable, and the best part is they're temperature controlling, self-cooling. These are miracle-made sheets. Did you know that the temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets inspired by NASA. Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. Their self-cleaning, comfort, and quality are through the roof. They're designed for your skin. Stop sleeping on bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores, causing breakouts and acne. Sleep clean with Miracle. All you have to do is go to trymiracle.com slash menace, trymiracle.com slash menace, to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And whatever you're buying from them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code MENACE at checkout, you'll get three free towels and an extra 20% off. So upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash menace and use code MENACE to, came, to claim your free three towel piece set and save over 40% off. Trymiracle.com slash menace. Treat yourself, Menace Army. They're worth it. Well worth it. All right, here we go. If you swap Bill Levis and T-Law how different is the Jags season last year? I mean, probably not that different. It's the exact fucking same. Probably not that different. Bill Levis and Trevor Lawrence. There's our comp. That's the that's the playing field that he's playing on. I'm just saying, if you swap him, I mean, we saw we saw Bill Levis with two days notice go out there and throw for 400 and four touchdowns. Who's better, Chuck Levis or fucking Trevor Lawrence? <laughs> Who would you rather have, Deshaun Watson or Trevor Lawrence? Mm. Deshaun Watson, probably. Okay, there we go. Just Clemson on Clemson crime. Clemson on Clemson crime. <laughs> Dabo do and Dabo don't. Um, when is the Super Chat, Zach, and then get to some college football Oh, I thought talk. you were saying get up out of here. Oh, it's not that time yet. Got it. I said, bro, I mean, we, can, we, we can get up out of here, bro. But no, it's no. Early. We, got, we got a show to do. But say I, I wrote a I, – I, maybe I didn't write a banger. Who knows? Buckeye Brazy, thanks for the 10. Member, did y'all watch the 11 Warriors Dallin Hayden interview? The kid looked mentally checked out and exhausted with Ohio State. He needs to transfer and get an opportunity to showcase his talent. Go blue. Oh. <laughs> I I don't think he's going to transfer. He sees what's coming. I mean, he might he'll be the third back this year. He'll be by far the feature back next year. I think he's going to play this year. Um, I, I saw Ryan's press conference talking about the running back room, and he was giving him a ton of praise along with TC Coffee or something like that. However you say his name, Caffey, the walk on who had a hundred yard uh, year yeah. game. One Ryan was very complimentary of the running backs, which is so convenient because he's coaching them. Mm-hmm. So why wouldn't he be? But no, I mean, I didn't see it, the Dallin Hayden interview, but I think the kid, the kid's not going anywhere. Also, I, you know, I, I haven't, I haven't watched it. I read some quotes from it, but I will say, and, and I, obviously I'll watch it and revisit this. He does kind of have a more, much more low key personality, yeah. much more laid back. The yeah, moment doesn't feel massive to him. I mean, his dad was a running back in the NFL. Like he, he, he really, he's really even keeled. If you yeah. watch any of his press conferences, like he's very reserved, calm. I, I guess you could say he seems checked out when he does interviews, probably because he doesn't want to fucking do them. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think that has anything to do with how he's on the football field. I mean, shit, I would, I wouldn't want to do him either uh, to, to give it a beam. But you, a lot of times, you see that with guys who, like, you know, fathers played in the league, like get like a more, a more reserved, um, kind of like understanding each moment as a process rather than like getting yeah. so absorbed in it. I mean, Marv, same way. Like Marv seemed pretty uninter- uninterested in every interview. Absolutely. Yeah, he, you could never watch a Marvin Harrison Jr. interview and be like, man, this kid really seems like he's high energy and invested. Mm-hmm. But he was. He just wasn't for you, the media. <laughs> he doesn't care. I also think Ohio State needs to have a priority on keeping down. That's why it doesn't <laughs> surprise me that Ryan was so complimentary because after yeah. this year, you're going to lose your top two. Yeah. And then the two behind him, I mean, it's going to be James Peoples and, and Down Hayden. You're, you're yeah. going to need those two next year, um, no matter how you slice it. And that's the one – I mean, you don't want to be thin in that room, especially with the way – 
that the seasons are getting longer and longer and longer. Um, and, and you know, that, that fucking stupid slip turf, you never know who's, yeah. I mean, the running back room has been injury riddled for the last like three years. And so you really need depth at that position. I mean, the fact that TC Caffey has a fucking hundred yard game and he's crazy as a walk on should tell you everything you need to know. Um, Tyler, thanks for the five member Tyler. I got a class of 20, 30, 5, 10 quarterback at 145 that can sling the rock for menace seven on seven. He'll be ready in two more years for you. What's his name? No, he's going to have to sit behind a 2028 quarterback, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll put that back up there, Chris. There there's there's the uh the avi that you get if you become a member. There it is. Okay. You get the demon and that demon changes colors and evolves the longer you're a member. So if you want to become a member, go to YouTube and join for 5 bucks a month. Shout out member Tyler. GMC, thanks for the 5. JT Barrett not the best passer or runner at QB. But JT Barrett, possibly the best leader at QB in Ohio State history. <laughs> I, I agree 100%. And I mean, I, I don't know if there's much of a debate who's a better leader than JT. I, I've never seen one. And honestly, I think that because he wasn't the best runner or passer, he had to be the great leader to mm-hmm. play here. Yeah. Right? I mean, he, the intangibles got him on the field. And he was, he wasn't, he, he, it's not like he was bad. He just wasn't an NFL thrower. He just wasn't great in anything except for leading, I think. Like he was toughness. A, he was a good runner. I mean, he, he ran the ball well. Yeah. He'd go get you a first down. He you know what JT was great at? I mean, elite. Was he never took he always got positive yards. Yeah. Like plays would break down, shit wouldn't work out. Somehow that motherfucker would get you second and six. And I you'd watch it and be like, God, we never are behind the chains with this kid at quarterback. And that matters a lot. Like a lot. And it wasn't always pretty, but second and six is fucking awesome. I think that's what killed me about Kyle McCord. Oh, fuck. Like, I could take the incompletions, like, all that. But, I like, the the eight-yard sack on first down, you know you're never seeing Intentional grounding because you don't want to get hit. Yeah. I mean, shit, Terrell Pryor, same deal. Terrell Pryor would take some fucking 17-yard losses on first down. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, my goodness gracious. I cannot do it. I cannot yeah. do it. Um, I think I think JT Barrett holds the record for longest rush by a quarterback in our highest history. Yeah, Minnesota. Yeah, seventy six. How yards. he outran everyone, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> he was running like a badass little kid. I mean, bro, it, bro <laughs> it was like you're like they're gonna catch him, right? And yeah. then fucking fifty yards later, nope, they didn't. And I don't know how. Yeah, bro, he definitely wasn't moving, wasn't jamming <laughs> no. or sliding. Bro. I mean, granted, that was the coldest game I've ever been a part of, ever. Yeah. Like it was minus something with wind chill and. I think he just was warmer than everyone else. I don't know. <laughs> he would just step in. I think he thought he was going to get caught. Oh, for sure. But damn. But his path was great because it's not like he just ran for a touchdown. Just like, He's like fading away from everyone. Like, don't catch me. 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 Touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> Comedy. Don, member Don, thanks for the five sub fellas. Zach, I would move to Columbus for my son to play seven on seven uh, for you. He's a 15-year-old QB that can throw the ball 60 yards. You don't have to move here. You just got to get here for practice. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, this. That's I, I have two days this entire month without multiple youth sporting events, and it's this Friday and Saturday. One, Justine and I are going to be g- degenerates, and two, I'm going to work on the 7-on-17. Seven seven so Monday, we'll, t- we'll talk. And I can coach it. I can. Co- well, you know, if you ever, you know, you can coach your shit, Chris. I'll, I'll, I'll coach you. Hey, you could be there. Um, hey, check you could be heavily involved. Check why thirty three banana Tuesday, Tuesday special play, <laughs> special players, special teams, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Speed. Thanks for the five guys. I was coming home from work and saw this car passing me. I swear <laughs> it was Connor Stallions as he passed. His license plate had a CMU logo on it. <laughs> that that would be hilarious. But we never got more details on that either. We've never got more details on anything, and I'm waiting. Like, I don't think they're ever going to come out. This is going to be like the great mystery of college football. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's going to go away. What a way for the NCAA to fade out. (laughs) Tyler, remember Tyler, thanks for D5. Also, did you see the video of people talking about Chip Kelly upset Howard lost his stripe Saturday? He didn't think he earned it. He didn't. Howard transfers. He didn't earn it Saturday. He didn't play bad, but he he didn't earn getting his stripe off. That was political, but uh, I not and for whatever reason, it was political. Yeah, good for Chip Howard or, or Chip Howard, <laughs> Chip Kelly. You're live. <laughs> good for Chip Kelly. Yeah, um, it's funny, you know, Chip Kelly didn't come out and say it, but I have heard grumblings that maybe he didn't like that that uh, that Will lost his stripe that day when he lost it. Um, but again, like if we were to come on this show and say that, people would immediately like attack us like crazy. We just said it. Yeah, well, we said it because he brought it up because a different video said, like a different yeah. podcast said it. Yeah. So we're just we're trying to avoid the uh, not maybe not avoid the vitriol. We're trying to keep out of the civil war this year, mm, for now. But come fall <laughs> camp week two, 
Fall camp week two, you're not. You're. It's gonna be insufferable. Yeah, we might lose some subs. Nah, we'll gain some. <laughs> David Robinson, thank you for becoming a member. Shout what a out the basketball goat. What a guy. Nick, thanks for the five. Ron White pointed out anything can be a <laughs> DUI checkpoint if you crash your car into it. Oh, I got caught at a DUI checkpoint. Oh, where at? Well, when I slammed into three parked cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's insane. Sean, thanks for the five. Is there anything better than a live in person hockey game? That brawl. Versus a, a hundred dollar boxing pay per view where our guy, where's, where's our, our guy, guy Jody, Jody Shelley, Shelley, fucking legendary enforcer. I love a good old boxing fight though, but I hate how expensive they are. You know, you know how we watch them, bro. Oh yeah, yeah. DJ, thanks for the five. French guy, Keel, uh, Birmingham UFL minus six and a half. Gaharit cricket, high point minus <laughs> eight and a half lacrosse, minus eight and a half in lacrosse. What are they going to win? Like 12 to 2? He, heem NASCAR truck driving. Sydney rugby. You know what? Not rolling with it. I'm sorry, $50 bro. $50 parlay. Easy money, he said. I, I fucking tried. I fucking tried. Drew, thanks for the five. They, bar they barely asked Balin anything about how he did in camp, which is all I want to hear about. I was pissed at his interview. <laughs> do they, when, when those guys ask questions, do they – kind of ask things kind of worried a little bit like did they could lose credentials when when at least did you I feel mean, like guys were walking on eggshells because it feels like now nah. more than ever these beat writers are walking on eggshells than, than they were when urban was there yeah um no i mean they always played nice though they they the problem i mean i think it's a problem with most of the beat like tim may not a problem for him some of the veterans, not, but most of the Buckeye beat, they're super Buckeye fans. Mm -hmm. So, like, they're not going to ask the hard question because they're just, like, so, I mean, their dick is hard because they get to talk to fucking Ryan Day. And so it's like, they're not going to ask him a tough question. They're so excited to be there. They're giddy. They're like, oh, oh, God. <laughs> hey, Ryan. Um, So you you did a great job last year calling plays. Um, Are you, are you going to call good ones again? <laughs> you're like, what the fuck is that question? Like, quit stroking your dick to the head coach. It's okay. He's just a guy. I think I kind of understood the beat playing nice with Ryan Day after 2019. But, dog, when you lose three straight, can we please ask a fucking question or two? Like a real question. Just one real question. Let's yeah. just ask one. Like, when you when you lose three straight and you refuse to ask Ryan Day hard questions, is that you putting Ryan Day ahead of the block of? I mean, essentially. You're not doing your job. But... It just it just feels like you guys didn't get as many softball questions as the current coaching staff gets because yeah. the current ones like how like every every coach gets this question how are you preparing your room for this year and mm -hmm. it's like oh like you know we're trying to get tougher we're stacking good days this player's done this right this player's done this right we're just trying to you know keep our head down and grind when you guys were getting asked questions it was like we saw the struggles of the wide receiver unit last year <laughs> right like how are you going to get around that because a lot of balls seem to be hitting the turf today right and it's like damn. That's a real question. And the shit that Urban would get, too, is like, damn, that's a real question. And to me, I, I would think that Urban's got to be a little scarier than Ryan, right? Oh, right? Yeah. I would think so. So, I don't know. It just it, it feels weird. Like, the, the beat has shifted um, with Ryan Day. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe someone tell me if I'm wrong. So, I mean, I, I mean, we watched the Coach Key interview. Was there a single hard question in there? No. <laughs> that was the worst interview I've ever seen. <laughs> Drew, thanks for the two. Dallin. They're good. I kind of like Bowen better. Yeah. Bowen Baden. Yeah. Wow. Thanks for the five. Y'all can't be that dumb about Lawrence. Made the playoffs two years ago after the Meyer disaster, eight and three last year. Then injury started piling up for him. So now it's just team record is all that matters. Well, then fucking Trey or what's his name? The Brock Purdy is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Here's and here's why I'll push back to that Trevor Lawrence thing. That roster is far, far better than the Bears, far, far healthier than the Bears. And yet, I believe they won two more games to the Bears, and we never, ever, ever gave Justin Fields that pass. Mm -mm. Not a single time. They won two more games. Trevor Lawrence's ass. There you go. I said it, and I mean it, and I believe it. He's definitely overrated. That one's kind of not disputable. Like, the fact of the matter is that, that there's been no talk about him potentially being a disappointment in, in NFL football when that is what he has been. Yes. Like, those injuries didn't make him throw 39 interceptions. No, only 31 of them. Right, and it's like, and also, we put up Gardner Minshew's numbers. 
on that disaster team that you just talked about. <laughs> like we we whatever. we didn't compare him to Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> right? It was Gardner Minshew for Christ's sake. T. Shicey, thanks for the five. I know Simon has been here since Urban Coach, but why can't Styles and Hicks start and Simon rotate in? I need to see the freaks on the field. No, Diddy, for real. I don't know why. Bro, why do we always like guarantee the guys starting spots that maybe haven't earned it? Because it feels like that was like the thing that was done, bro. Like the first spring press conference, they said Cody Simon is going to be our starting mic. Like, it's huh? Like, he wasn't last year. Why are you saying he is this year already? He wasn't last year, and they did everything they could to not put him out there when fucking Tommy Eicherberg was running out there with half a foot and half a, an arm. Yeah, he had a chicken wing. Yeah. Like, why do we guarantee that guy the starting job? I don't know that. What happened to the program we love? <laughs> <laughs> I need to see the freaks on the field, too. Gorky. Remember, Gorky, thanks for the two. Memphis are dogs. Money line doubles money. I believe you. <laughs> Got no dispute, bro. Zach. I don't even you know what the fuck we're talking about. <laughs> Zach Randall worked today, bro. He's going through it. I'm here. Bro, Zach's funny. Zach walked in, sat down, said, forgot my fucking phone. Dude, <laughs> down bad. But it's all right. It's going to be all right. Percy, thanks for the five. Chris, do you think we get both of the four-star <laughs> running backs out of Cleveland or go all out to get the running back from California and fuck Jeff Duncan? What the fuck is Jeff Duncan? Oh, that's... Michael Thomas is top up. Oh, yeah. Fuck Jeff Duncan. <laughs> the Saints guy. Yeah. Um, on that front, um, I'm working on getting an interview with one of those three guys. Don't want to talk about who it is before it drops. But um, I think that they get Bo Jackson from Cleveland. I think Marquise Davis goes to Michigan. Real good back. Um, and then I think Jordan Davison from California ends up at Ohio State. I think part of the Oregon running back hire was to kind of shore that up, like yeah. Zach kind of hinted at and winked at. Yeah, the kid loved loves uh, Lachlan. Mm -hmm. Just didn't love Oregon. And yeah. now uh, Lachlan's at Ohio State. Which is kind of wild for that kid to be out west and not really be talking <laughs> with Oregon, especially like with Dan Lanning there and with yeah. Coach Locke there. But um, there's probably there's probably a little bit more to it. Um, T. Smitty, thanks for the five. Roll, motherfucking tied hoops. Bama, transfer center. Parker, what, Brailsford may transfer because he's getting beaten out by Brockmeyer. Ooh, transfers must earn their spots too. Yes. That's good. I mean, we saw, and it's not new to Bama. Like, Bama's no. done it before. I mean, Shit, I fell for it. I fell for the trap. I came on this show and said Tyler Buckner is going to go down there, <coughs> end racism, <laughs> win the SEC, and play for an Addy, and I was wrong. I was well, the beat tells you otherwise. <coughs> yeah. But, yes, transfers have to actually win the job. Mm -hmm. We saw it with Tyler Buckner at Bama. We saw it with uh, Spencer Sanders at, at Ole Miss. Like, just because you transferred in and you were decent somewhere else doesn't mean you're going to be the guy. You got to be the best player still. Imagine but, that. But I will say Ohio State over the last four years, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, has leaned further away from competition than those other schools. I don't know. I mean, you look at guys like, what's his name, Taiwan Malone, transferred in from Ole Miss. He, yeah. He hasn't played yet. I mean, we saw Jihad Carter transferred in as a starter at Syracuse. Everyone told me he was going to start. I never saw that motherfucker. Like five snaps on the year. Like, I think you still have to earn it. And, and, I, and I guess where I, where I push back a little bit, is that it feels like once a guy is a starter at Ohio State, they will not open up that competition unless something goes drastically, drastically but, wrong. But that's all speculation. Like, you don't know what those backups can do. Like, you think there's got to be better on the roster, but there might not be. And I, I contend that no coach ever would just put a guy out there that stinks when a guy that's a freak that is gr a great player is on the bench. Like, C.J. Hicks, we saw him on the field. Yeah. Motherfucker didn't know where to go. Well, and I... And I guess the other side where I think I might push back a little bit is like Sonny Styles, for example. Like Sonny Styles was playing really well, and then his snaps all just evaporated. And then all of a sudden, the Georgia game, he was the best player yeah. for that position. And yet he was the best player all year. So that that's kind of one of one of the things that kind of bugs me with them. Cause because at, at Bama, like Caleb Downs came in, started to me like started like Freshman. get it going and so they're able to get these guys that are freaks two and three years unless ohio state's just worse at developing in quick time than schools like bama both of which i believe are an issue yeah want to get a quick one from our partner zach that, talks that sounds good more. we'll be right back after this menace army i got a life hack alert they came to us a couple months ago and i started using them i got a family of six chaos like crazy if you want stress-free meals this spring check out factor 
They're delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every, every, uh, every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. And they're freaking delicious, man. They are so good. There's over 35 options, calorie smart, keto. You name the diet, you can find a meal that fits. Chef-prepared meals on your table in two minutes with Factors ready-to-eat meals. Gourmet meals, they have premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, bro- broccolini. And asparagus. I didn't even know what broccolini was before I before I got my first one. No fuss, no mess meals. Factor meals eliminate the hassle of prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Simply heat and savor the, the, the savor the good stuff. Tailor to your schedule. Customize your weekly meals with the flexibility to get as much as you or as little as you need. Pause or reschedule deliveries to suit your lifestyle. All you have to do is head over to factormeals.com slash menace50 and use code menace50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code MENACE50 at factormeals.com. Go check it out. Go check it out. Factor. I'm going to eat like four of them after the show. That cracks me up, man. Um, Big 12 recruiting rankings. I, I know we're, we're in the spring, but again, just another one of those things that is, is it red flag time or not because Colorado is supposed to be the team. Yeah, what's going on here? Well, what, oh, that's the, that's the that's the different graphic. Um, Colorado, Colorado, Colorado's fifteen. Graphic. Yeah, <laughs> wrong graphic. Colorado's fifteenth. Lower in... third on there, Pat. Pat's struggling too. Did you get fucked up last night, Pat? We need the lower third on the screen, please. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Let's make sure we do the show right. <laughs> Fucking a. Pat had a night last night too. I guess. Col- Colorado is fifteenth in the Big 12 and recruiting rankings right now. 15th. They didn't even make the first graphic. Yeah. We had to search for a new graphic that included them. I don't know much, but here's a PSA to fucking prime time. Do in-home visits. It ain't going well. Like, you can hit the portal all you want. You can get Band-Aid fixes. You got to recruit high school kids well, or you're not going to succeed. This is the first. This is a red flag of all red flags. You are behind everyone. BYU is out recruiting you. Think about that. It's a Mormon school. You can't even drink. Can't even have sex. Can't even have fun. They're beating you in recruiting by what? Four spots. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's 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 a long way till signing day. Maybe he's got some tricks up his sleeve, but you got to recruit high school well. And if you don't, you're not going to be successful. Dog, this is a major issue. Major issue. Because what was the number one draw with Prime? I mean, I mean, people could talk about good coach, whatever. The number one draw with Prime was that he will be able to get really good players at lesser schools because he's that good at recruiting. Yeah. If he's not doing that, I don't think he's a good enough, quote unquote, football coach, <laughs> at least in what I've seen, to be at a P5 school. Well, no one's a good enough football coach without the players. You got to have right. talent. That's the number one thing a coach needs. Without talent, you're a shitty coach, no matter how good you are. And and I guess there is, you know, unknowns about Prime as a as an actual fundamental and X's and O's football coach. But the thought was he was going to kill it in recruiting so so well mm-hmm. that it wasn't going to matter if he was deficient in one of the two or both. But if he's not killing it in recruiting, you're he's going to be a shitty coach no matter how good he is. You can't be deficient in all of them. No. And I know it's early, but why is Cincinnati out recruiting Colorado right now? BYU, Chris. BYU. BYU. What? Yeah. I, that, don't even, I don't even know if they recruit. I mean, not really. I've never heard of a kid going to BYU. Me. I mean, I know kids go there, but who? Who's anyone that's ranked on, on 247? And the only school that's lower <laughs> than them is a school that just lost their head coach. Right. So they're trying to get things settled before they really get out there. Right. And honestly, like, because it's these, these aren't like national rankings, it's literally just Big 12 rankings. Right. Fucking two four stars puts you up at number six. Right. <laughs> so, so you're not landing anybody. Like you just need two kids and you're in the middle of the pack at this point in the year. Yeah. It's, it's, de- it's definitely alarming. Um, and I'm wondering, I'm wondering why. But yeah, take an in home visit. How about that? Let's start there. Um, Trey McNutt called Ohio pussy. And it worked. Uh, Trey McNutt's the goat. So he said, it smells like bitch in here. My man played played seven on seven football and said, fuck your rules. Mm-hmm. They, so they hit him with a suspension. They hit him with a suspension. He said, we'll see you in court. Guess what <laughs> they did? Legalized seven on seven. <laughs> Joke's on you, OHSAA. You can't tell. I said it when it first came out. How can you tell that kid what he can do in his free time? Like, you, 
you wouldn't suspend him if he went and played pickup basketball. Right. You wouldn't suspend him if he went and did routes on air with, with some people. Like, seven on seven is what? It's not like he's playing football for another team. It's an entirely different entity. You can't tell that kid that in the middle of July he can't go play seven on seven with his boys. You can't do it. And you're going to lose that court case. And they fucked around and found out. Shout out to Trey McNutt for fucking putting on OHSAA's nuts on the grinder. Bro, and like, they didn't even try to pursue this dog. No. They said, here's your suspension. He was like, all right, cool. I'll see you in court. And I'm also playing um, at whatever tournament next weekend down in Florida. Thanks, guys. So I'll be ready for the next one. And instead of even fighting back a little bit or, or calling him, they were like, they, we literally don't have anything. Yeah, they got on their knees and sucked the cock okay. is what they did. I mean, they were like, okay, fine. Fine, I'll do it. I, I, I was going to compare it to those videos you see on TikTok of the guys getting pulled over and, like, them knowing their rights, like, the back of their hand, and, <laughs> and then, like, calling the supervisor over, and the cop's like, yeah, let him go. We can't we yeah. can't do anything. That's a good comparison, That's too. That's what this reminded me of. I mean, uh, you know, the cock-sucking analogy hits. Well, it's something they didn't want to do. Yeah, they didn't want to do But in the it. end, they had to do it. Yeah, um, and I guess the Trey McNutt name makes it uh, an even better analogy, but I, I will say I, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here all day. I'll be here all day. <laughs> um, so Ohio knew they can't win. How big is it for the state of Ohio now to allow seven on seven? And how much has that changed for the recruiting? But just every the whole seven well, on seven team in totality. It's it's good and bad because there's a reason why it was not legal, right? It's because high school coaches didn't want kids playing for shitty coaches. They didn't want kids going out with these street agent fucking AAU type of guys that all of a sudden, when you go recruit a kid, and I dealt with it in Florida, I loved more than anything when a kid played for South Florida Express. Because I'm like, oh, Brett Getz, and the, they're awesome. The guys. Yeah. But when they go play for some other fucking organization with some fucking guy who wants to be a part of their recruiting and wants to see how much money he can make to bring him up on a visit, you're like, oh, okay, good. We got a street, street agent involved now. That's what Ohio was trying to prevent. So it's great for these kids. If the right people do it, if the wrong people do it, they get on the wrong team with the wrong coaches that all of a sudden try to infiltrate their life and become a part of their process, then it's awful. How big is it for receivers to gain skills in seven on seven? Like, is that like an additional, you know, it's just playing the developmental game. period? Yeah, they're just playing. They're just, they're just playing the game more. They're running more routes. They're catching more balls. That's always good, right? Mm -hmm. It's always good to keep like, like practice. And that's what seven on seven is. It's practice. It's not, I mean, I know it's competitive. I know people win and it's, they, people act like it's an actual game, but it is truly just a practice element for the game of football. And it can create some bad habits, but it also just gives you more reps, more, more times catching the ball, more times running a post, more times running a slant. Like, it's good shit for do, me, to me. Do you expect this seven-on-seven seven rule change for Ohio in the next four to five years to be pumping out more high-end wide receivers and defensive backs? Because that was one of the things that we always see. We always see guys getting exposure to seven-on-seven seven and their ranking flying up mm -hmm. at a seven-on-seven seven tournament, and then all of a sudden, oh, shit, like – like, let's, let's get that guy. Look, is it going to help Ohio guys get, get exposure? Because I feel like Ohio has the athletes, but they miss out on the spring developmental period and some of the seven-on-seven -seven exposure stuff. So you get a lot of guys that are such late bloomers because they didn't have those moments. Yeah. I mean, I think I think it's it's only going to help. I don't know how much it's going to help. I don't know if it's going to, like, all of a sudden you see this meteoric rise of Ohio kids that are all of a sudden five-star receivers. But it's going to help. Whether it's just a little bit more than that, it's going to help. It's going to be good for, for kids. Yeah. You know what I think? This might be a hot take. I think if seven on seven is legal um, three years ago, I think Caden Saunders gets an Ohio State offer. I, I don't disagree with that. Because I think he would play somewhere, would tear up a camp. A lot of those clips will go viral. I mean, obviously, we know. I mean, it's, it's in some capacity, Brian Hartline values seven on seven. Because, um, I mean, we, we've seen some of the kids he's, he's offered um, in, in settings like that. Yeah. I, I think you'll – it's – the most positive thing I get from this is I saw this and I was like, we might finally have more Ohio kids get Ohio State offers earlier because they're playing the game more. Yeah. And over the last three years, that's kind of been one of the things that I've been frustrated with. No, no doubt. I think it's going to be great for for the kids, for the recruits, the, the high school players. I think it's going to be really awesome. If it was this easy, 
Why didn't they do this shit like four years ago? Because they didn't want to. They're, they're, it's, it's a lot like NIL and transfer portal with the NCAA. They didn't want it to happen. And all it took was someone saying, fuck you, stop me. That's why Trey McNutt is a GOAT, is a legend. He is. He was the first player in Ohio high school history to say, okay, you're going to suspend me? Fuck you. I'm playing this weekend too. Kiss my ass. Bro, he deserves all the flowers in the world. I'm just surprised like another player didn't do this as well. Well, I'm, I just like, hope for him. Well, I just hope because when he first did it and got and got suspended, I said on the show, I said, send him this clip. Keep playing. Challenge him in court. Yeah. See, fuck, tell him fuck around and find out because there's no way they could win that court case. And I don't know if anyone showed it to him, but that's what the fuck he did. No, I, I, I'm pretty sure he saw it. Good for him, man. Pretty sure. No, really proud of him, and that's really big time. And now it's kind of – now you're seeing a lot of uh, seven-on-seven teams around the country, Zach, scramble to try to get some Ohio talent now. Yeah. Because Ohio's got some players now, like the – you know, Tavian St. Clair, obviously, five-star quarterback. There's a lot of seven-on-seven teams that w- would love to have kind of that exposure around them and that kind of player. Um, <laughs> The fucking Galloway kid, the corner that's reportedly 6'2 and running Listen, a 10'6". Make an Excel sheet. And write all these fucking kids down. I have it in my head, dog. I all don't, right. Don't Let's get it on paper because we're going to start recruiting like a motherfucker. <laughs> recruiting like a motherfucker. NIL so. deals for everybody. NIL. <laughs> the menace. MIL. Menace, image, and likeness. Yes. Mill. We're giving guys a mill. <laughs> giving guys a mill deal. <laughs> Just say a mill, bro. It Give like them a mill. million dollars. <laughs> um, do you think next, Zach, do you think this could kind of be the domino to maybe get spring football? I mean, one thing at a time. I mean, it feels. Like I mean, this kind of is different. Big. This is different because it's private, right? It's, right? it's what you do in your, your on your own time, your personal time. Like spring football is something that the that has to go through the schools. So hopefully that happens in the future. It needs to happen. It should have happened a long time ago. It's ridiculous that it hasn't happened, but that's a whole different ball game compared to seven on seven. It just feels like Ohio, the state of Ohio, is so far behind, and yet they still, to me at least, pump out top five talent in terms of like you know, high school players around the country. And if you go by state, what yeah. like Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Texas, California, Ohio. I mean, I would argue that uh, Ohio actually produces better talent than Alabama. Oh yeah, for so, sure. So top five. And it's like, when I've talked to high school coaches around the country, the two things they've talked about is spring football and seven on seven. Now, a lot of them are kind of split on seven on seven. Um, oh, geez. I always know when I see her up there, it's a bad deal. I'm just saying, let's see who's in charge. Who's in charge of the OHSAA? Gina Franks. Not trying to be sexist, but the fuck is that woman going to tell us about spring football? Dr. Jason Selgo is the board, board vice president. He's a superintendent from the Archbold area local school district. Never even fucking heard of that. Lived in Ohio, recruited Ohio for a long time. Don't know where Archbold area is. Dr. William R. Nye Jr., Bo Arnett, Jeff Wheeler, Andy Bixler, Molly Fiesler. Paul Stone, David Alvarado, Glenn Gillespie, Dr. Scott J. Hunt. You know what they all are? Bunch of old as fuck white people that don't have a fucking clue what they're doing. It just it just doesn't help the kids to not have spring football. But I've heard coaches like those are the two things they, they mentioned hand in hand. It's um, it's all about spring sports. The track and baseball programs will suffer. No, they won't. Look at Florida and Texas. Fucking baseball and track is cooking. When I talked to Ginn Senior, he said that uh, because of the COVID stuff, they got that spring football period, and it was the best thing. And from that, guys took massive, massive leaps that spring. Imagine that. And then what'd you get? You the got state Bryce, championship. St- uh, Bryce West shot up in the rankings. Yeah. Tomorrow and Witten shot up and in the rankings. And they won the state championship yeah. for the first time ever. For, think about that. Ginn's first ever state title came when he got spring football and was able to coach those guys up even more. It's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing what one thing can do. So yeah. um, I'm, I'm excited and really happy that Ohio got this one right. But I don't know if they really get credit for getting it right or if they just got bullied into getting it right. <laughs> no, they got bullied. They got put in a fucking – they got stuffed in a locker is what they did. Yeah. You know, what do they say? Uh, bullying works. It does. Bring back bullying. <laughs> uh, but the, the right kind. Yeah. <sighs> Jordan, thanks for the two. Coach, listen to Crank by Yeet. I won't do it. You will see why I can't fuck with him. Nope. I promise it sucks. I'll listen to it though. Yeet is fucking awful. I'm I, I, and listen. I get it. I, I, my son puts him on the car all the time to piss me off. The beats go crazy, mm-hmm. but it ain't Yeet. 
And I mean, he might be making the beats. I don't even know that. If he is, he should just make beats and stop ruining good beats. It'd be like Nav, be like Metro Boomin. Yeah. Like, if young Yeet don't trust you, I'm going to shoot you. Yeah. That's what. It, that's all we should know about Yeet is that if, if he doesn't trust you, you're going to get shot. We shouldn't know what he sounds like rapping. Totally separate. But that that from We Don't Like You, the song that they, they diss bro on yeah. or whatever it is or like that, that like moment where Metro went crazy on the beat. They said since Metro doesn't rap, that was him. That was his diss to Drake too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris, my guy, what up, my guys, my guy, Chris? What does Coach Locke and Davis and Crystal Ball mean for Marquise Davis? I hear they want Bo Jackson. I want Davis all day over Bo. I hate to break it to you, bro. Marquise Davis is not coming here. <laughs> well, there you go. I don't even know who the fuck that is. So, Marquise, that's that's the that's the Cleveland's version of Curtis Samuel. Oh shit. Yeah. I like that kid then. Bro, when when you look at him, bro, he's got like that same kind of wiry build. <laughs> like some some <coughs> running backs have like the like the thicker, stockier builds. Like uh, obviously like what JK Dobbins mm -hmm. will stock here, but some guys have that like that more lean, like yeah. H back build, like the Trace. Marshawn, had. Marshawn Lattimore was the Ohio Curtis Samuel. Oh yeah. Marshawn was so fucking disgusting, bro. He was unreal, bro. I don't know what he was an alien. Yeah. He could have been a Belinikoff winner, just so you know. I do know. Old Ben, thanks for the two. R.I.P. Leach, college football feels so weird without him. I was just thinking about him the other day. Yeah. Rest in peace to Mike Leach. I miss him. I do. Too. Don't even know the guy, and I miss him. I mean, I miss like the media days, like the sound bites, everything. Oh, yeah. All of it. Keel, thanks for the two. Quit making excuses for T Law. He's underwhelming. He stinks. So overrated, bro. So overrated. But that's the politics of it, right? Like, if he was a third round pick, They'd be looking to replace him. Oh, yeah. But since you're the first overall pick and you've got X amount of dollars invested in him, you will do everything you can to make it work. Or try to make it work. Mm -hmm. Gorky, thanks for the two. Shelly and Rupp talked to Jackie Redman after the fight. Wait, after the fight. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got okay. it. Speed, thanks for the five. Hardcore Ohio State fan, but let me ask questions for Menace to Sports. I guarantee I probably won't get another press conference. I'm a fan, but still want accountability. Yeah, I'm, they won't give us a press pass, so you're gonna have to do it for somebody else. But Denzel asked me um, why why we're never at practice or in the Woody. <laughs> I said, bro, be for real. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. He really wanted to know. I don't know if he knows. <laughs> Nick, thank you for becoming a member. Oh, gifting a membership, legend. We love the good old gifts. Shout yes. out to Nick. Keel, thanks for the five. Name five good UM players in the NFL. Hint, you can't. That's not true. Name five. Um, Tom Brady. Oh, no. No, he's not in. Charles Eight. Woods. No. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Me, I mean, Hutch is one. Yeah. Ni Nico Collins. Yeah. Two. Um, there's got to be a bunch of D linemen that I'm not thinking about because. Or O linemen, maybe some O linemen. Yeah, because Shane's about to yell at us in T minus four minutes. That's okay. Um, about that. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe my brain's fried. Who knows? Probably. I mean, our brains are fried together. Coach Zach, member Zach, thanks for the ten. Would Vince Young be a good Will Howard comparison? Bigger, f f f physical runner, not the strongest arm, but gets gets the job done. We need to see Arvell Reese, CJ signing the package with Kiata. Freaks. Yeah, um, that's. I mean, maybe like on a much, much lesser scale. I mean, Vince Young's one of the greatest college quarterbacks ever. Philly's pissed. Uh, Philly's pissed. <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's quite a reach, but I, I see what you I see where you're going with quite it. Quite a reach. That's like Michael Jordan <laughs> at the end of Space Jam when he's going to dunk the ball and stretches a mile and a half. That's like what is it? Mrs. Incredible from the Incredibles. Like yes. we're we're talking Victor one fuck your mama level reach. Like we're yes. talking the extreme, extreme reaches. But let's get to commercial break. We'll be right back after this. All right, Menace Army. You know, I'm a pouch guy. I found the best pouches on the market, and they're, they are made by a company called Lucy. They're made for your nicotine routine and delivered straight to your door. 100% pure nicotine, always tobacco-free. You can choose your form, pouches, breakers, which have a little juice infusion, or gum. They have all three options. You can choose your strength, 2 milligrams to 12 milligrams. 
if you don't use if you don't use nicotine very much, two milligrams will suit you. If you need a little kick because it's not working for you, all the way up to 12 milligrams, the most I've seen on the market. There's mint, apple ice, espresso, mango, a ton of flavor options, and they're outstanding. I use them every day. Save yourself from the weekly gas station stop and sign up for a monthly subscription and get 15% off. I already mentioned the Lu Lucy Breakers. They have a tiny capsule inside. You just bite it, flavor instantly. They're outstanding. My favorite Lucy flavor is the mango. I think they're out. They're just amazing. All you have to do is level up your nicotine routine with Lucy. Go to lucy.co forward slash menace and use promo code menace to get 20% off your first order. Lucy already offers free shipping, has a 30-day refund policy. If you change your mind, all you got to do is lucy.co and use code menace, get 20% off of free shipping. And here comes the fine print. Lucy products are only for adults of legal age, and every order is age verified. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Go check them out. It'll change your pouch game. It will. It's changed mine. And I know you saw that merch. That merch is fire. Mm -hmm. Go to menace to merch.com right now. Go, go cop that hat, that, that pullover, or anything else we have. I can't wait for the live show, bro. I want so many people to pull up in Menace gear. Yeah. Like, well, I if want... you order it now, I don't know if we'll be here in time, but if you already ordered it, for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying before. I just want to see people in Menace gear. Yeah, me too. So, I mean, it, yeah, it'd be, it'd be kind of pretty close if you order today. It's like hit or miss. Yeah, it might, might get there in time. Who knows? You, you only know if you try. Yeah. <laughs> you only know if you try. Um, a group of college presidents and executives are proposing a college football super league of 80 schools. This is the pay players, collective bargain, and increase revenue. The current model for college athletics is dead. 80 schools, Super League. Where so we're dropping at? 50 because there's 130 Division I schools. We're going to just drop the bottom 50. 80 is far too big. The 80th team has no business making the same money as the first team. Yeah. It's just stupid. Give me 40. The top 40 schools create a league. The, the next 40 or the really the next 90 create like a, a minor yeah. league. Like, I don't know why we're doing 80 schools. Who's the 80th school? UCF? UCF's going to make as much money as Georgia? Yeah, you, you can't collect a bargain, bro. You no, can't. it's so stupid. But here we go again. But this is my favorite part. Why do we have the NCAA? A group of college presidents and sport executives are proposing something. Like, is that the new NCAA? All we need to do is the Big Ten and SEC whatever that is, coalition, the little thing that committee they created, let them decide. The Big Ten and SEC are not going to go with any of this shit. They're going to be like, what? The Pac-2 gets the same money as us? Fuck you. We know who is, I guess, leading the charge to pitch this is the, uh, I believe, the, the chancellor at Syracuse. Of course he is. So it's like, for him, it makes sense, right? Of course. And that's why he picked the number 80, because they're 80th. <laughs> yeah. So for him, he wants 70, 80 <laughs> schools. But I, I would, I mean, I would even contend that the 40 is too many, Zach. Yeah, I don't I know. Think, I think I think 32, the NFL model, is the perfect way to do it. Because think about it. Like, if you go to, what, the 80 teams, it's like, we only ever care about the top 25 anyway. Like, who is the 40th best team in college football? Well, I don't even know. Like, you're you're talking about... Texas Tech or someone you, like that? You're talking about Texas Tech. You're talking about BYU. You're talking about Syracuse. I mean, yeah. they're probably lower than that. I mean, you're talking about schools that don't really matter. Yeah. Like, think about it. Exactly. When we think playoff picture, do we care about any win outside the top 25? No, but I, th I, my, I think my only point is... Every year, there's 40 teams that could be top 25 teams, right? Okay. Because it's fluid. It's it, it's in motion constantly. And a team like BYU could be really good one year and be the 24th best team in the country. And I think – and BYU is probably a bad example, but let's say TCU, for example. Where are they at historically? Maybe top 30, but they went to a natty. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I guess because you, you still want like schools like TCU and, and Cincinnati yeah. in there. Yeah. Because Cincinnati made the playoffs twice. Like, they could be a top 25 team this year. I think you got to include about 40 teams just for the chance that that 40th team is actually the 20th team. It's going to be so fucking hard to do. I mean, yeah. it's going to have to be SEC Big Ten. Yeah, they have to decide. And and honestly, the thing is, if they did decide to cut out all those, all those other schools, Zach, there would be no, oh, this is not this is an illegitimate championship well, because Cincy didn't get a shot. And here's why I think they, they should do it. Because the minute they do, Florida State wins that court battle in a landslide. Mm. The minute they create their own postseason, schools like Florida State, Clemson, they're going to be like, 
see, the ACC is holding us back. Yeah. We want out because we can't elevate our program anymore. And I think the Big Ten and SEC then benefit from it because they guess who they get? One of the two is getting Florida State and Clemson and Miami. Like, I, I think it just speeds up the process. I think the Big Ten and SEC little committee, they need to get shit done. Fuck Syracuse. Don't even talk to them. Let them put out tweets and shit about this 80-team Super League. Okay, sounds good. We're, and then, like, in a month, just say, hey, by the way, here's what we're doing. Sorry. Sorry you guys are fucking awful. Yeah, 20 SEC, 20 Big Ten. Call it a day. Done. You're right. Forty. You, 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 t- you talked me off of it. You talked me off of it. Congrats. You win, brother. <laughs> um, I love this question just because I think it's hilarious. Well, and I, I, I want your honest take on it. What college football team was better, 2022 Georgia or 2023 Michigan? I need it in the chat. Who's the chat think was better, 2022 Mi- Georgia or 2023 Michigan? That's going to be our pinned comment today. Because it's like – Cause it ain't even close. Cause I, let, let's do position by position. Who was better at receiver? Oh God, come on, Georgia. Who was better at tight end? Georgia. Who was better at offensive line? Uh, Michigan probably. Okay, so it, I guess it depends on how you slice it, right? Because you know Georgia has, I think, three NFL guys on that offensive line, mm-hmm. and then Michigan's offensive line was kind of more imposing downhill. Um, running back room, Michigan for sure. Quarterback room. Ooh, Stetson Bennett or JJ? I'm taking JJ. Really? Yeah. I'm taking St- Stetson in 2022 was, was really good, though. Yeah, that's just style of offense that's making you believe that. Stetson yeah. Bennett is also, like, selling groceries right now. Yeah, I mean, he is, but he threw for more yards than CJ Stroud that year. Yeah, I know. Crazy. I, I Honestly, I think they're more similar. I think the thing about JJ that's more appealing is that he's not 28 years old. Well, and he's f- a far better actual quarterback. Just they don't throw it. They didn't throw it. Um, defensive backs. Mm, uh, Come on, that's, Georgia. It, it's it's Georgia. Michigan, it's it's close, but it's Georgia. Yeah, linebackers. The whole defense. I'm giving it to Georgia. Okay, so we're giving Michigan offensive line, quarterback, running back. Yeah, well, that's a little closer than I thought. I guess. Yeah, but I think Georgia's the the answer. Yeah, well, and I think they're the answer because of one man and one man only, Todd Monken. Yeah, Todd Monken was fucking great yeah people don't talk about it i like this zach i like talking about the big three the big threes record against each other since 2000 anything on this surprise you or is it kind of just this is the pecking order of the, of the big three no it's, it's about right mm-hmm. i mean ohio state's 34 and 11 750 756 win percentage i mean you're talking about 24 years and you know 21 of them ohio state dominated right yeah. they were 16 and three prior to the three-year run michigan just had and Penn State's always been, look at their record, 279. Shout out James Franklin. He can beat everybody except for those other two. You know what this taught me, bro? Because I I've, I've, I think because my hatred for Michigan for the last couple of years, I've been trying to, like, push this narrative that they are right there with Ohio State and Michigan. And it's not. Like, they're, no. they're, they're the next tier. Can they sneak a game every now and again? Yeah. But they're the school that in all this merger, they have a chance to get washed and pushed down. Yeah. They are essentially Cooper Manning. It's like, damn, both your brothers are Hall of Famers. What happened? Well, my kid's good. (laughs) Penn State is the Cooper Manning of the Manning family. Ohio State is Peyton. Michigan is Eli. And Penn State is Cooper. I think Penn State's record against those two schools are the reason why the Big Ten argument to be a close to the sec has fallen short so many times yes because penn state's never had that window where it's like oh shit they're really really good or oh shit i could see them winning something because like in the sec it's always been what bama georgia but at times like florida spikes wins titles. lsu lsu spikes win titles all this will have these weird runs where they're a really good football team not winning but that's their fifth that's their fifth team yeah so it's like damn for the Big Ten to truly catch the SEC, they need Oregon to be right at that 500 mark against the Big Three. Yeah. So, shout out. Shout out to them. Uh, Zach, I want to throw this Devin Brown clip up there, and I want you to rate the throw because Devin oh, gets yeah. a lot of hate, oh, and we're going to introduce this segment. There right, it so is. This is a deep post. I want you to see where this ball hits. Right on his outside hand. Probably one foot away from a perfect throw. And people on social media are – 
saying this was awful. I need better ball placement. Like that's a 50 yard throw. That's a foot off of perfect. It's where only the receiver can catch it on his outside hand. That is a nine, a nine out of 10 throw. Just to be clear, a nine out of 10. And like you're throwing it to the fastest player on the team. And also let's not forget like part of deep balls are about ball tracking. So Mm. like when you see a ball that's perfectly thrown, you have to watch the receiver's path. Like, does he, does he have to adjust his route a little bit? Because that's necessary on almost every deep ball. And Jaden Ballard didn't adjust his path, so the ball was right here instead of right here. It's like that ball was almost perfect. That's a, I mean, to me, that looks like a lot of arm talent, right? Like that's yeah. I mean, I mean it's, it's a phenomenal throw, and okay. anyone that's arguing otherwise is f- a fucking moron. Do you think the vitriol towards Devin Brown has a lot to do with us? I feel that way, but that might be a little narcissistic. Yeah, right? narcissistic or self-absorbed. But I just can't figure out any other reason. What's the other reason that people hate Devin Brown so much? I don't know. And I'm I'm glad Johnny Dixon got involved because Johnny Johnny saw people criticizing the throw and quote suited it was like, there's nothing wrong with this. It's a throw. great throw. Like he in stride, he caught it for a touchdown. Like, and like I said, it's literally like at most two feet off from a perfect throw. You know what I thought to myself when I saw that throw? <laughs> this is fucked up. Where's the Kyle throw land? (laughs) Well, where's the Will Howard clip of a deep ball? I ain't want to say it. Show me that one. Show You know what? Yeah, I'm with you. Devin Brown sucks. Okay, show me his competition. Where's his deep ball throws? Oh, they're not putting that shit out there for a fucking reason. The fuck are we talking about? It is kind of it is kind of nutty, bro. That like all the big plays, all the big clips we've seen have all been from Devin Brown, except for uh, the one wheel route to Judkins. Yeah, and also Which like that was a really good throw. Yeah, yeah, good throw. Also, the Ohio State media team very rarely puts out stuff where you can see who's throwing the football. <laughs> yeah. So for them to put the whole thing in there, I was like, oh shit, that's actually that's actually kind of wild. Yeah, kind of wild because we, we, I mean, they they treat their practices like it's the fucking CIA. Yeah. It's like no one, no one can know. Um, percentage of money bet on Ohio uh, on on what schools to win a natty this year? This was fucking nuts, Zach. Buckeye fans are confident. Ohio State, forty one percent of the money is on Ohio State to win the title. Okay. Georgia is at second place at sixteen percent of the money. Texas six percent. Colorado five <laughs> percent of the money. How is Colorado even up there? That is a donation to Vegas. <laughs> Notre Dame. 4% of the money. LSU, 2.8. Hey, man, hold on. Where are these broke-ass Michigan fans at? <laughs> Talking about we ain't going to fall off. Put your money up. Fuck you mean you ain't going to fall off. Right there, 2.3% of money. Ohio State fans are, are sec- took out a second mortgage. Yeah. Where are these broke-ass Michigan fans at? Maybe Keel and DJ were on to something. I'm just saying. <laughs> Broke bitch money. Come on, man. Put it up. I'm also disappointed in the old Miss fan base because y'all been loud as a motherfucker. 2.2% of the money. Hold on. Where's where's Miami? Yeah. I thought they were back again (laughs) for the 48th year in a row. (laughs) And then percentage of money, Oregon, 2%? Come on, bro. Yeah, Oregon has a better chance than almost any. I mean, they have probably, what, the fifth best chance to win the the natty? Yeah, they're a plus 1,000 odds. Yeah, like, come on, Oregon. Yeah, where's that I, Nike money at? I'm just saying, yeah. Where's where's the Nike? I know this at? much. Here's the only thing that concerns me about that, bro. Ohio State's not winning the Natty, bro. <laughs> bro, Vegas likes money a lot. You think there's not some corruption in sports? <laughs> you put that much money on one team to win it. Guess who Vegas is not going to let win it? That team. <laughs> you're going to see some questionable calls like the Clemson game. And you're going to be like, the refs hosed us. It's like, nah, <laughs> bitch. Vegas hosed you. Those refs got paid. <laughs> Dog, 41% of the money right now is stupid, ridiculous. Stupid. For Georgia to be second place with under half of that, 16% to 41%? It's nuts. Yeah, dog. It's nuts. But Buckeye fans feeling themselves right now, feeling confident. No, nah, they're uh they're they're definitely feeling themselves. Um, Zach, I do want to hit some super chats and then you know maybe maybe get us on out of here. Yeah, sounds you know, good. On, on, on what we got, because it is what. Here we go. It's Thursday, right? It is Thursday. (laughs) Thursday. DJ, thank you for the two. Bishop Sycamore versus Florida Express 7-on-7 on on ESPN. (laughs) Bro, I still want to get the Bishop Sycamore dude on the the show. He was here at Kohat. Bro, which is actually insane. He was was at our studio a couple weeks ago. Does he work here? No, he was just here for something. Okay. Cool beans. 
cool beans. Dick Buck, thanks for the two. Chris, do we have the exact hoodie you're wearing for sale? No, sir. This is a little vintage joint. A custom build. Yeah, custom build. We're working on it. Yeah, that'll 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 be what for the uh, for the the New York pack at some point, yeah, right? Yeah. Back when if the Giants win nine games, I'll drop a New York pack. We'll drop some <laughs> Menace of Sports Tims. We'll drop some. <laughs> uh donald <laughs> thank you for becoming a member what a guy appreciate you donald old ben thank you for becoming a member appreciate you old ben damn old ben i feel like i see you becoming a member every other day <laughs> right <laughs> nick member nick thanks for the two menace image and likeness foundation mill oh buddy yo it's happening that is a fucking nick, bar nick you're a goat for that and we have two people that can rep the brand. Oh, yes, we do. Well, only one of us is a mom. Doesn't even matter. In today's society, we lie about everything. Yeah. I, the other identifies as a mom. Yeah. <laughs> Visibility day. Brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is so fucking fire. I'm almost mad I didn't come up with it. Baka man, thanks for the five. I got a seven-year-old with a cannon arm. Is crazy accurate. Where do I sign him up? Bro brother, sign him up for DFL, for the local football league. I can't. I, I coached a twelve-year-olds, uh, and, and that—that's about the as young as I'll go. Dog, do we do like seven-on-seven seven tryouts? Oh yeah, like a like a like big tryout. Oh buddy, we're doing a fucking combine tryout. We're getting forty times, ten times, shuttle times. Dog, if you have a seven-on-seven seven team that blows up, Ohio State has to let you back in the door. Oh, they don't have a choice. I'll pay the registration fee. We'll be there. I'm saying like no, like like remember how they SFE, will they will them in two seconds. Like if SFE, like SFE, that whole organization because to come up to Ohio State, yeah. and get shown around the Woody like some kings because it's SFE, Jeremiah Smith, Brandon Innes, like all those guys. Look, if you put together an elite seven on seventeen, make no mistake about it, Chris. Ryan's son will probably be on the team, so he can come to practices and come to to tournaments, and he'll be able to just sit there and recruit. He'll be legally allowed to do it. Like, Hardline's kid will be the ball boy. <laughs> like, what are we talking about? Fry's kid will be the center. Even though you need a center, but someone's got to snap that ball. Dog. That I, ain't, I ain't stupid now. Bro, Jerry Emig is punching air right now. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Scary Jerry Scary in the cut. Scary Jerry. <laughs> that would be crazy, bro, to see you at a practice, dog. Because everyone that said fucked up shit about you for the last five years, they're all going to be looking at you face to face. <laughs> But they'll be on the sideline. They'll, they'll be oh, off, off the yeah, field. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to stand right by the fucking huddle. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Drew, thanks for the five. If you take the three highest paid Ohio State NFL players, they make more than every Michigan player combined. Damn. Oh, I'm sure that, that absolutely sounds accurate. I mean, because who are the three highest paid? Nick, Terry. Mm. I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, I, I just know Nick and Terry are both $100 million men. Well, you also – so were Mike Thomas and Zeke at one point. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, current, like they're still on their current – they're, yeah. like, on their current, current deal. Yeah, their current salary. I don't know who the top three are. Yeah, that's a good question. Well, I feel like Taylor Decker has to be there, right? You would think. I mean, he's 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 always getting paid. Always getting paid. Member Caveman, thanks for the two. Denzel didn't know the running back coach was hired. That was a great moment on the Yeah, it was hilarious. <laughs> he said, who? Who's our running back coach? Chris told him, and he was like, how the fuck y'all know? And I don't know. I go to the Woody every day. Yeah, he said, I'm in the Woody every day. <laughs> That's crazy. It was, it was hilarious. If you haven't watched Chris's live streams on Twitch, they're fucking outstanding. They're funny, and they're funny. And you can tell. I don't know. That's like, I, I feel more comfortable there because I know that, like, they just want to be talked to like like young men. Like and, people? Yeah, instead of like a yeah. science project. Right. Sometimes I wonder like the beat. I don't know. I don't want to even go it's there. It's far better than a post-practice press conference. Taylor Decker makes uh, has a $60 million contract, by the way. Oh. Average $15 million a year. If he's broke, just say that. <laughs> Keo, thanks for the two. Will Howard comp is Blake Bortles. That's pretty fair. That's right? fair. I mean, I was gonna say like like Colin Klein, his former quarterback coach. The you know you know you remember Colin Klein? Yeah, the big fucking dude. I yeah. mean, I mean, I mean that was his quarterback coach that kind of played the same way. It makes sense because he yeah. was at Kansas, Kansas State for all those years for the entire time he's been there. Ian Bates, thanks for the ten. I think T Law tricked us. Eighteen team was loaded. Nineteen that long run against us masked the otherwise bad game he had. And twenty he was awful against and looked really bad, all while beating up on the ACC. Yes, I mean, that's 
That's not not true. I mean, Ohio State did a great job taking his taking him out of the game outside of his scrambles. That's how that's how they beat Ohio State, along with some questionable calls. Yeah. The only thing their whole offense was him scrambling. You know why the 2020 game should have been more of a red flag than people would have suggested? Because that was against Kerry Combs, dog. Yeah. <laughs> like everybody was touching that defense. I'm talking about everybody like, was getting sexual on, on the Combs defense. I'm talking no rubber, no lube, diddy party, spread the legs. Like it was just getting leaking. crazy out there, bro. Like, Pussy leaking. I'm just saying, like, squirt everywhere. Like, come on. Like, yeah. they were getting raw dog deluxe. We had Bryson Shaw that was the starting safety. Like, the fact that he struggled against those guys and tough, like tough Portland played so good. I was like, damn, he's draftable. <laughs> and it's like, I never once said those words ever before that game. Or after. Or after. And fuck, I, tough Borland, great Buckeye, whatever, over there working at Wisconsin. But the fact that he looked so lost and out of place in that game should have been the red flag. Yeah, I agree. Because, I mean, fuck, we saw what Mac Jones did to them the game after. Yeah, I just sexualized them. But the other part of it is we blame that on Dabo's cousins. Yes, we do. So. We sure do. We got to get a quick word, though, Chris. Yeah, we do. We'll be right back after this. All right, you know we love a little fantasy sports, and our partner, Prize Picks, is the best place to do it. Did you know you can win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks? Four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 with basketball, hockey, college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Obviously, March is gone, April's here. We got Final Four, NBA, all the different options to pick from and prize picks is the one that you need to go with all you have to do is download the app today and use code menace for a first deposit match that's free money up to a hundred dollars go to prizepicks.com and use pro promo code menace and if you put in a hundred bucks they'll give you a hundred free dollars stack four picks or uh, four uh player over or uh, player to uh, totals more or less stack them together and you can win up to a hundred times your money turn a hundred dollars into into a thousand dollars and it, it, it's it's truly remarkable what you do. $100 into $10,000 if you hit it right. Go check them out. Price Picks, our longtime partner, and get that free cashish with promo code MENACE. Go get that free money. Also, need to mention, pull up today for the OVE show, 3 o'clock. They got some breaking news, some, some insider information on, on movement with these super conferences. We talked about it before, the Big Ten SEC, and OVE is going to, I don't know, break news? I don't Honestly, know what you They're, they're going to be the forefront of the changes happening with NCAA. I yeah, mean, they, 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 my guy Torg has some, has connects. And yeah. so they're, they're going to drop some shit about the, the future movement of super conferences. So tune in right here on this channel at 3 o'clock and make sure you check that out. Definitely. that That's going to be that's going to be a good one and an interesting list just because NCAA is gone at some point here pretty soon and NCAA is changing, college football is changing. Yeah. And they've, been, they've done a really good job kind of keeping up with things. <coughs> Philly, thanks for the 10. People who have never thrown or caught a, a pass talking about ball placement kind of feels like a virgin talking about how sex feels. It really does. It, it's amazing, isn't it, Philly? Like some dude on Twitter is like, I, oh, that's horrible ball placement. You're like, what? He just dropped that ball 50 yards on his right hand. The fuck are you talking about? Yeah, it's like, and you made a good point about the ball tracking. Yeah, like, like the, the receiver, that's tracking a deep ball. You got to adjust your your path and use your body to box out defenders. It's just somebody that has no idea about throwing or catching a football. Honestly, if he gets two hands on it, no one. I, I don't think. And he could have. Yeah, he definitely was just showing off. I showing thought. off with a one hander. But you know, shout out, hey, shout out to JB. We go see him this year. Yeah, hold on, pull, pull it back up. Oh yeah, yeah, play it again, Pat. Let's see this thing. My only issue, and you might be able to answer this, is who the fuck is forty three? Uh, that's um, Griffin. Griffin. Who the fuck um, is Griffin? I think Archie's so walk on. Yeah. yeah and I'm on. I'm not disparaging him, but like shout out to JB in his fourth year beat a walk on. Yeah. Woohoo. And you know, we expect JB to do that, right? Run fast, run real yeah. fast. So, but yeah. Good ball. Good ball, DB. Or bad ball, depending on what side of the Civil War you're on. Right. Member Elks, thanks for the two tight end coach Elks. Develop the next Brock Bowers. Elks really wants to be the tight end coach. I told him he could be the line coach for the seven on 17. You don't really get many tight ends in this sevens, right? No, I mean, you, if you have a freaky one. Yeah. But you definitely don't have an O-line. That was the joke. You know who was a really good tight end coach or tight end um, in seven on seven? JT. Oh, I believe that. Yeah, he was a really – he was so good that, in fact, uh, people thought that he could have been a high four-star tight end if he, if he did that. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. 
He was the number two leading receiver on his high school team. You know who the number one was? Mm-mm. G. Scott Jr. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. There you have a little fun fact, little Chris fact that Zach always is confused why I have those, but I have them all. I'm always confused. Jeremy, thanks for the five. Why the hate on DB33? He has a spine and testosterone. That's more than the obese <laughs> beta beat writers can handle. That's maybe what it is. That, Devin seems like an alpha, and they don't like it. They love them some Kyle. They love them a little beta boy. Bro, the defense for Kyle. I was talking to someone on the phone on the way here. The defense for Kyle was so crazy, bro. Crazy. Like, we saw people in the beat and media comparing his first two games to C.J. Stroud's first two games. And it's like, C.J.'s first game, he threw for four touchdowns and 260 yards. And then his second game, he threw for 471. Right. And at the same time, like... I heard Austin Ward allude to the fact that Kyle left basically because of us, Mm -hmm. (laughs) because of our criticism of him. And he, he, it, you know, he didn't get treated fairly by some people in the media. And it's like, yes, he did. He got treated exactly how he should have. He was average as as hell. And we said he was average. Honestly, and couldn't handle it because he's a beta. Honestly, I contend that he got treated better than he should have because he, you know, we took it easy on him, to be honest, to, to, to be fair, because the team was so good. But he deserved a lot of criticism. And we saw in the L22, he never once had a, quote, unquote, really good game until Michigan State. And Michigan State's corners are a little legitimate. Everyone had a good game against Michigan State's secondary. But to say, I mean, I mean, I, 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 mean I, I could start for them at corner. Yeah. Tuck was coming, though. He was coming. All diddy. Keel, thanks for the two. Remember, Keel. Ronnie Bravo, $100. Jason, $100. Elric, $100. Come on. Oh, he wants to bet all you guys on the game. See what's up. Keel, thanks for the two more. Shit, bet me five. At least I'll lower the stakes. Just Here's a fun fact for you. Michigan State's defense last year. Kyle McCord threw for 353. Michael Penix Jr. threw for 536. (laughs) I mean, everyone, like, J.J. McCarthy threw for 357. He's J.J. McCarthy in that offense threw for more yards than Kyle McCord. Think about that. Yeah, bro. Kyle, Kyle was bad last year. I, and I was of the belief that Kyle had people just in a in a bad relationship. It's like, well, quarterback went 11-1 and one in spite of him. Yeah. Not because of him. Yeah. I mean, shit, he tried to do everything he could to make it 10-2. and two. <laughs> And at Ohio State, you, like, you, you have – you have nine built-in wins at Ohio State. Easy. Just for the record. Speed, thanks for the two. I got your Menace swag, bro. Shit's lit. It is. Menace to merch.com. We're going to keep expanding and growing the uh, team colors soon. Team colors coming soon. Probably this weekend. Sick. Kenny, thanks for the five. Chris, who has the most sugar in their tank? Diddy, Tupac, or Anthony Rothman? Definitely Diddy. Definitely Diddy. I mean, I heard, I heard, I heard it, bro. And Diddy's not even denying it anymore. Like, we're at the point where this is just kind of... No, he's like, I want to see who rocks with me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, we know who rocks with you, which you know. All the gay dudes. Yeah. You know what? And with that, let's get out of here, Zach. Let's do it. I got to go get something to eat. I'm starving. I hope you do, too. We'll be back tomorrow for a Freaky Friday. And then one week from tomorrow, live show at Yogi's, April 12th. Doors open at 11. You got to get there at 11. I'm just... I'm predicting here. Get there at 11. Don't show up at noon and be like, there's nowhere to sit. I fucking told you. The bitch is going to be packed. It's going to be lit. It's going to be a blast. Raise the money for charity. We got jello shots, yellow jello shots. A dollar of all those will go to to our, uh, well, it's our youth football charity that's now going to be a part of this seven on seven team. So come take some jello shots for the kids. We'll see you next Friday. We'll see you tomorrow on the show. We appreciate you, Menace Army. Menace out.